everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech. Just want to do a quick video here for this Wimaxit. So it's W-I-M-A-X-I-T. It's the M1012. And this is a 10.1 inch touchscreen, um, specifically kind of geared towards the Raspberry Pi. So I have done some Raspberry Pi projects in the past and I just never really had a good monitor for the Raspberry Pi itself. So wanted to pick this up and just take a look at it. And what's really cool is that, you know, for the most part, it's like a bare, it's a bare monitor, right? So it doesn't have a giant frame around it or anything like that. So you can kind of work this into, you know, any sort of project enclosure or project thing that you might want to do. So it does have the manual. You know, this is what the monitor looks like, right? So very, I guess, thin without a bezel. And then you get direct access to the back of it you know, the various display connectors, the touch connector, uh, power, HDMI, and all of that. And then you do get a bunch of stuff, right? So you get some cables here. So it's HDMI cable, uh, micro USB cable for the touch controller. You actually get some speakers so if you want to kind of create an enclosure have speakers in it you know there's speakers that you can connect in there it's a couple feet so you can put it on like a little bit of a stand if you just want to kind of have it sitting on the desk or something basically some adapters for the various inputs so pretty cool what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead, hook up a Raspberry Pi to this and show you what it looks like and uh, what the screen resolution is and all of that, and uh, do that in the second part of this video. This was just an unboxing, so let's hop on over there and take a look. Hey everybody, so I've been playing around with this Raspberry Pi monitor screen that I just did an unboxing on the other part of the video. And I just wanted to show you kind of quickly what it looks like after you have it hooked up. And I don't know if it's hard to tell here, but on the back of the monitor, there's some mounting uh, screw holes or studs that you basically just take your Raspberry Pi. So this is Raspberry Pi 4 is what I have, but I, it also included some accessories for a Raspberry Pi 3. And what you do is basically you mount it to there, and then there's a couple... I don't know if you can see, it's hard to hold this too. There's a couple adapters that they have that kind of go from the micro HDMI to the HDMI that's on the back. And then, I don't know if you can see it, same thing here. There's like a USB connection that goes from the USB to the USB. And then this is, I have an external keyboard, uh, keyboard just plugged in right now. But then there's some feet you can put on there, etc. So there, I mean, obviously you can do all kinds of stuff with this if you want to build it into some sort of enclosure get some sort of frame for it or something. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that once you hook up the Raspberry Pi this way, uh, you just need a power cable. So just put plug the power cable in and then it provides the HDMI and the touch connection to the, you know, to the Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, I can just touch this and it acts kind of like a mouse at this point, right? So Raspberry Pi, as far as I know, out of the box doesn't support multi-touch in a way that is useful. I may be totally wrong. I need to do a little bit of research on that and how to make that work better possibly, but it works, right? And so I have this old Lenovo keyboard here just, just hooked up so I can actually log in, create the password or create the user account and whatnot. What I should be able to do here is go to preferences, add, remove software and search for Matchbox. And then pick the on-screen keyboard, hit OK. Okay, and then once that is there, I should be able to go into accessories and open the key. Oops. 
accessories, okay, accessories, keyboard. And now I have an on-screen keyboard. So if I wanted to, then I can disconnect this keyboard and then just use um, the on-screen keyboard uh, to type and, uh, and do stuff. So that is that. Although to be honest, I think that generally, you know, Raspberry Pi OS is not really meant to be a tablet or, you know, replace kind of that, uh, something where you would mainly use touch as an input, really. It's still very much geared towards a mouse and keyboard. So you can make some things work, like I said, with like this on-screen keyboard and, and whatnot. But to be honest, probably the best, um, thing that I could use this for is some sort of like home dashboard or IOT project where, you know, not, I'm not necessarily interacting with it in a way where I have to constantly type and, and search and use applications and things like that. Maybe it's just a single kiosk mode dashboard and I can, you know, just with a single touch interact with different elements on the screen. And I do have quite a few smart devices in my house. I have a Echo B thermostat i have um, some i have some apple home uh, you know enabled controls and things like that i use hoops to kind of bridge that with uh, you know other devices such as simply safe and things like that so i might use this you know in in, a, in that way right uh, i've also got some security cameras that i use ds cam for on uh, synology and maybe i'll just create a synology dashboard for viewing the security cameras or something like that. So, and then find some way to kind of make this into a nice some sort of frame where, you know, it looks like a picture frame or something like that. It has a little bit of depth to it to, you know, to make up for the Raspberry Pi and the power and, and all of that, and then use it in that fashion. So it's gonna, I'm gonna be experimenting around with this quite a bit over the next, you know, months and things like that. But for now, I just wanted to do this kind of quick review of, you know, just, it looks really good, right? Um, it does have a backlight control. So I do have the backlight kind of all the way up um, for the purposes of this video to hopefully be able to view the screen a little bit better. But really there's like a backlight and that's it. Yeah, I mean, overall this is a pretty cool device. It's pretty nice. The only thing I would say I was a little bit worried about is mounting the Raspberry Pi in the back. In, in order for me to get these all lined up, I had to kind of really push the Raspberry Pi kind of at an angle to get it to line up with the holes after the USB and HDMI were plugged in and I was worried that I was gonna break those little connectors. I didn't obviously, because this works, but that was one thing I was a little bit worried about is like, um, you know, how, how well that stuff on the back would hold up when you're manipulating it. But once you have it plugged in and all of that, and you're not gonna be taking the Raspberry Pi on and off, uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, the other thing I did not put on here yet because I didn't wanna like um, adhes adhere them to the back of the screen are some speakers. So basically there's a couple speakers, they plug in on the back in those white connectors and then you know basically you're able to listen to music or sounds, I guess, not music per se, but listen to sounds from the operating system on the device. Now, if I do build this into a case, I don't wanna put those right there, so I might need to actually maybe extend uh, this. Maybe I will have to extend the speaker cables and, and I don't want them like adhered to the back. It, there's some outlines where it wants you to do it. Um, so I didn't wanna do that, so I just didn't put them on yet. So yeah. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those below. I'll be happy to answer. This is Andrew from T is for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.